in the know, nonstop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. And now watch Kirk Cousins. He just gets dumped right on his cousins. The flag comes out, but the play's not over yet. Nope. Let's watch Casey in the middle of the field right here. Watch this hit. It's hard to be a free safety leveling hits like this on Justin Jefferson. And look at what Jefferson's doing here. Like, do I want to get up and do this again? That was the best rookie receiver in the NFL last year, and he's thinking twice about getting back up. Brian Baldinger doesn't just like football. <laughs> he loves football. Football! Football, yeah! yeah. Football! Yeah. Football! Yeah. Oh my god! Does he just sit at home, just grinding tape and doing Twitter videos? Yes. Oh, what a life question, yes. that man leads. Baldy, yes, that's all Baldy does. God, just wakes up in the morning, puts a football in the microwave, football, cuts it up for breakfast. He eats it raw. He doesn't. He does just not microwave raw. anything. <laughs> he goes to the store, buys chicken. And cuts it up and eats it <laughs> raw, and he never gets sick because he's baldy. He asked the butcher for a just a slab of meat. The guy says, uh, the "Guy starts wrapping it," and Baldy says, "No, dude, don't even need. Just put he it." Goes in, and buys put, the cow. He buys, li- he buys a lot. He buys a live cow. I want to look it in the eye it before I eat it. God. Here's what you got to do. His name, <laughs> Frank. What was this cow's name? Frank. I want to know about Your Frank's Frank family. Yeah. What was his? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Where was he raised? Uh, this is Purple Daily, you <laughs> savages. Uh, this is uh, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win the Super Bowl before we die. That's the mission statement here, presented by Surly Brewing Company. And if you're watching us on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, thank you for helping us get over 18,000 subscribers earlier this week with a record-setting Vikings vent line. And those TCL TVs are some of the best TVs on the market Um you know, we're talking about an award-winning lineup of new TVs, the most entertainment, stunning resolution, affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. But let's waste no more time here. When are you guys going to admit that you were wrong right now? Let's roll it. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Yep, this is the most transparent segment in all of sports talk. We also do a classic version of it on Mackie and Judd every single Wednesday, as we have for years. And here's how it works, boys. Three Vikings or football-related predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of batting average. Uh, I'm sorry. We keep track of batting average on Mackie and Judd. We keep track of completion percentage here on the football-centric version and touchdown passes. And listeners, if you guys want to participate, like our guy Greg is about to, you can either slide into Declan's DMs, Declan Goff on Twitter or Instagram, or you can send us a message through the Score North app. Uh, boys, Declan's been holding a completion percentage lead here. Mm-hmm. Everything's been kind of kind of muddled up close together. Yep. But we have a lot of things that have come off the board here. So ahead, how, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Feel Judd, right. you're, I think, Judd, do you, do you ever let the struggles in Mackie and Judd write that down, no. carry over into Purple Daily write no, that you down? You can't do that. You can't do that. You have to every day. Like, this is a day-by-day, show-by-show thing. So, no. Just I mean, what happens in time. classic WTD, I put aside, and I come here to play. Call it? WTD. WTD. I heard a WTD classic. chant on Sunday WTD. during Sunday Night Football. Right. Write this down. All right, we'll start with Judd. More like WTF for Judd. Oh, boy. Just a bloodbath here. Uh, well, you said the Vikings would beat the Cowboys. They didn't. You said, unless I missed it, I watched the whole thing. I'm you sure said, you didn't. I'm sure they didn't mention it because he I don't they remember played either. so poorly. So I don't the think so. NBC game broadcast yeah. mentioned Kirk Cousins in MVP conversation at least once. And yep. It would have had to have been very early in the broadcast. Correct. Yeah. Correct. They did not. Yeah. You said the Lions won't pick up their first win <laughs> until Halloween against the Eagles. They came really close. In the yeah, game. what? 40, within 40 points? Yeah. They did score a touchdown late. Oh, okay. Uh, Daniil Hunter will be the NFL Comeback Player of the Year and have 14 or more sacks. <laughs> I did, did you, Daniel? 
We're taking all the Dino Hunter predictions off the board. No, here, no question. He's out for the I'm season. laughing at myself. Hunter will have eight, and then you then you hedged a little here and said he'd have eight or more sacks in 2021, and we kind of laughed at like, really, dude, come on. Came with it too. Yep, you got six. Uh, you did redeem yourself a little bit. You said Dak Prescott either won't start or won't no. complete Sunday's no, game. Unacceptable. Unacceptable nice. performance by me. Mm-hmm. Unacceptable so. performance. It's I I take full responsibility. But I mean, Stella did sort of tell me, like she she got in my ear and told me a couple of things, and then Don <laughs> told me. To, I mean, I take full responsibility. Let me be clear. I mean, the officials but weren't even supposed to let you make that last. The people prediction. in my family really? were telling me what to do, so I just want to make sure that you know that. Listen, I don't handle the predictions here because I, I never know what you guys are going to want, so I just leave the predictions up to you guys. You mm-hmm. know, uh, in those key situations, I just so I, don't, here. I just so log I, them. I just yeah. log them. You just log them. You don't take I just any log, and sometimes them. incorrectly, sometimes the misspelled words. Yeah, I, I just true. log them. Okay, I know. I just... and, and, yeah, and it's your well, fault, but you're off the hook. It's a very, a very Kirk Cousins uh, Sunday night performance against the Cowboys performance by old Macadac here. So oh, he boy. said the Cardinals would beat the Packers by at least 14 points. Hmm. Hey. Yeah, the Vikings would have a double digit lead at some point against the Cowboys. Their lead peaked at seven. So the cousins, to, yeah, you were close. The, the cousins would be credited with another game-winning drive against the Cowboys. He had a chance, kind of. Kind of. Uh, and then I, I, at some point, I said Daniel Hunter will play in at least 15 games and will tally at least 15 sacks. So, yeah, uh, I wanted to highlight this one because it's not coming off the board, but it's back under the spotlight. I said Adrian Peterson will pass Barry Sanders on the all-time rushing list in the 2021 season. He needs like 450 yards, and he just got signed, baby. Let's go. LFG Adrian Peterson, 36 years old, Judd. He signed to the practice squad, though. And, oh, and I know be elevated he's, I know he elevation. will be, but this is so pathetic. This is so pathetic. This no, is such, amazing. This is a guy who so desperately needs a paycheck, he can't quit playing. He's... This is more about it. Well, there's interest. Obviously, someone wants him. Yeah. Uh, By the way, one of the best teams in the NFL. The Titans are one of the five or six best teams in the league, and they were. Violating every rule of the Zolgadian, if you were great, quit. All right. I want to see him pass Barry Sanders. I don't. Go for it. I love Barry Sanders. The listeners had a rough, rough, rough. Like we didn't? Yeah, but this is like, look at this. This is a bloodbath. I mean, Patrick said, for the remainder of the season, the Vikings will not lose a game they are leading or tied at the half. He said that during the bye week. Patrick. Oof. Welcome to the welcome to the club here. All right, Realistic Randy said, Daniel Hunter will be NFL Comeback Player of the Year. I don't think that's going to happen now. Uh, Bob said, Hunter will have 12 or more sacks. Elijah, maybe he had, I don't know if he had like the, by a week mixed up, but he said in week seven, which was the Vikings by Kirk would get hurt. And then Kellen Mond would be the starter in week eight. He will only lose two games or fewer as a starter. And then he would win a playoff game. But like the, none of that has happened. Uh, John said to Neil Hunter, will have at least 10 sacks. Harrison Smith, at least four picks and the Vikings make it to the NFC championship game. Oof. Uh, and Jonathan did say, this is, we're going to keep this on the board. He said, uh, Kene Nuangu will play in one of the next three games and will have a rushing attempt or will return a kick. He, he was he was back there for kick returns, but he didn't, but re- didn't oh. return a kick. Yeah, got that's it. A, this got is it, got very it. oh man, this is a write that down lesson. Yep. So he's so this is a parlay, right? Like he yeah. played in a game. Yes. So yep. so we got that part down. Now he needs a rushing attempt or a kick return at yep. some point in the next two games for that to pay off. Uh, okay. Declan, you said Cousins and Dalvin Cook would combine for more yards than Dak Prescott and Zeke Elliott. You were correct on that. <laughs> Dak didn't play, so. Uh, you said the Vikings will beat the Cowboys, and there would be another mention of you like that either on the Sunday night broadcast or something that surfaces after the game. No, we didn't like that, Kirk. Nope. You said Harrison Smith will pick up the first INT of the season for himself against the Cowboys. Nope. The Vikings would sign or acquire a cornerback before the game against the Cowboys. Nope. And that the Vikings would fire. <laughs> well, they should have. One of the following by the bye week. Zimmer, Spielman, or Clint Kubiak. One of them should be canned. Mm. 
If just a long. rough week all around for everybody. And so through the carnage, Declan still leading at 36% completions, five touchdowns. Judd, 33% oh. with one touchdown. Listeners, 31% with a league leading seven touchdowns. I'm at 26% with five touchdowns. Woof. That was rough. That was rough. Well, let's get Greg in here to maybe push this thing forward here. Guest listener predictor, Greg, what's going on with you, man? So you've, just for, the, for some context here, you are a diehard Vikings fan who lives in Texas. Yep. And was in Minneapolis for the game at U.S. Bank Stadium on Sunday night. How is your yep. life right now? <laughs> the plane ride home to Austin was terrible. I'm oh. just going to say that. Just chance and, and, and just terrible. Was it, it a was... bunch of Cowboy fans who made the trip? Oh, 100%. Still drunk? Oh, God. Oh, Still yeah. drunk, too? Just Absolutely. the smell of booze permeating the cabin? <laughs> I could see the guy's phone next to me as he's texting his wife or girlfriend about how it was the best game of his life, and I just wanted to kill myself. <laughs> <It was. laughs> oh, no, dude. He's like, it's the best game of my life, and I'm sitting next to this loser Vikings like, fan. Yeah. Oh, oh man. yeah. This guy's yeah, a it was total terrible. clown show. How yeah. about them Cowboys? I no. bet you yeah. got that one. Oh, they were chanting it. They literally chanted it on the plane. Oh, God. Yeah. Write this down. Can I parachute hey, out? Can... <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Do you even need a parachute, here? dude? Just exit jump road. out. Just jump out the egg. <laughs> Life is pain, my friends. Just kick out one of those windows. As a Vikings fan, that's a thousand percent correct. So, all right, let's uh, let's get it here. We're going to start with Greg. We're going to go around the room. Greg to Judd, over to Declan, and then back to myself. And uh, we'll take three trips. So, what's your strategy here? Are you going to be a check down Charlie like Kirk Cousins? Or are you going to drive the ball down the field like Cooper Rush? No, I feel like I'm going to drive it with specificity because I think Ooh. there's just too much. Uh, there's too much negativity that we just really need to call it all out. So we're just going to okay. throw the specific negatives right out. Love all right. So we'll start so, with Greg here. Write this down. Go ahead. All right. So we all think we all know that Zimmer is likely done, but I'm going to say I'm going to give you a seven day window of which the Vikings are going to announce his departure from the team, and that is in between the Green Bay game after. Uh, and before the San Francisco game. So that stretch between November 21st to the 28th, the Vikings will announce we are parting ways with Zimmer. He might be able to finish the season, but they're going to announce it, that it's done. Because I think what's going to happen is coming through, it's going to be just an embarrassing stretch of games coming here. And that's when they're going to go, okay, enough is enough. Yeah, this is... That's the moment. This is. I, I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but there's like... Because it feels like there's only one path, which is the path that you just described. But there are really there are really two paths here. The Vikings could somehow Mike Zimmer could have sort of a Tom Coughlin come to Jesus moment, and and say, all right, all right, all right, you guys, let's talk. Let leaders of the team, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins, let's all come together and let's beat the Ravens and go on a run, or what Greg just said. And uh, I would be curious to know what that conversation's like after the Packers game. Is it Zim? We got some good news for you. You can go back to the ranch for Thanksgiving. What do you? What do you? What do you mean? What do you mean, Rick? What do you mean, go sit Mark? In the hot I don't know. Pour some go red sit, wine. Go watch sit in the hot tub with your kid and talk about football because you're yeah. both fire. Would you fire both? Would you fire all of them? Adam's got to walk out the door with dad, right? Yeah. I mean, probably has to. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I stick around, dad? No. no. You're fired, Mike. Go find your son. Yeah. You guys are yeah. back your back. Write this down. All right. Judd Zolgad. Okay. So I think as bad as the Cowboys game was, and it was terrible, I think because we're so mad, we're, we're forgetting the actual viking stages of grief how the team processes things because there are specific stages of vikings grief and the letdown and pathetic performance that we saw on sunday is not ordinarily followed by a give up it's followed by defiance which then will be fo followed with a, a disaster which which to your your point is the packers game but I think we're in for a defiance week now. We're in for a you guys don't believe, we still b believe. Yeah. There's the brief rally, right? I, I think it I think it was 2010. The debacle against the Patriots, the Moss presser, glorious stuff. And and then Moss gets cut. And I think the next game at the Metrodome, they played the Cardinals. Now the Cardinals weren't great, but the Vikings completely waxed them. Because that was the defiance. That's the defiance this team shows, yeah. despite the, the fact that they are a bunch of choking pigs for the most part. Oh, jeez. So, <laughs> so, and this team is. So the Vikings <laughs> will score no fewer than 27 points on Sunday wow. against Baltimore. Because okay. this is going to be the Kirk bounce back. On the road, noon start. This this is the Kirkian uh, dream. 
going back to the East Coast near Washington to show everybody. You like that? You like that? And the pressure's off because we all expect him to stink, which he's not going to, to do. 27 or more points. Oh, 27. Got so you're 27. not predicting a win or anything. You're just saying they're going to they're gonna show life offensively, basically. I, I am saying, yes. I am saying that they are going to score points. They could okay. win. I'm not, par- I'm not going to do a parlay here. But right anyway. now, uh, at pretty much every sports book has this as a six point See, this spread here. Baltimore by six, right? We now. know these. Th- we know these guys. This franchise does this. I'm kind of with you. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I because we had uh, on Mackie and Jeb write that down. Earl came on and he said they're going to get beat by twenty or more. This it doesn't feel like they're just going to lay down and die. It almost feels like they're going to do it. If, if if let's say it's players against the coaching staff right now, it it does feel like, and you and I are both kind of hearing some things that like. There's definitely some tension between oh, players absolutely. and coaches right now. Absolutely. That, that they would rise up in spite of coaches or something, or they would find a way to come together for a minute yes. and, and at least make this a game against one of the best teams in the NFL. Yep. So, the rally. The rally is coming. The late life rally. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, dad's had a great day. Next day, dad's dead. <laughs> what? God. this down. <laughs> Dude, the late, what? The late Jesus. life rally. <laughs> Oh man! Oh yeah, dead. his vitals look great. Yeah. Oh, sorry, he's dead. Someone who has it's over. Basically, happened to them. Yeah, that mm-hmm. that can happen. All right, God, I know. know. That's what I'm saying. That's good real. To know. The late good life to rally know. is real. All, All right, right. D- Declan, you're, you're that's up my now. terrible transition into my first prediction. Um, uh, Phil, I I have no Kellen Moore prediction right logged. I don't believe I, you do. All no. right, so I'll just as I've been speaking it to existence for the last month or so, and especially this week, Kellen Moore will be the next head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Ooh. So I'm just gonna put it into the into the atmosphere right now. Yeah, I want the he's... touchdown credit because it's already November third. Kellen okay. Moore will be the next head coach of the Vikings. Would you wait until late January, early February to interview him? I would interview him ASAP. Like I, I obviously you have to wait obviously yeah. to the tampering period. I would I would do everything you can to not let anyone else talk to him. You saw the blueprint. You saw your next head coach across the sidelines. Don't do the Childress. Don't do the Childress. Do a real search. Don't do that. I saw that. We've got him in the hotel, and we're not allowing him to to leave. Oh, my God. Don't do Uh, that again. uh, uh, I'm supposed to go to Green uh, Bay. You want a job? Write this down. Write this down. The Vikings will not fire Mike Zimmer during the season. They will be. So just some off-the-record stuff here. Um, I, I think... Yeah. They will be competitive enough still. I don't I don't see this team just losing eight games in a row here. I, they'll they'll be competitive enough. Um the Wilfs, I think, would rather it's possible they've made a decision now after watching that game on Sunday and watching the last couple seasons. And they're gonna I guarantee they're gonna do deep breath, back channeling. Mm-hmm. Um they're not I don't think they're super knee jerk. You know, I think I think they like to just let things. I mean, obviously, Mike Zimmer's been here for eight years. They're not knee jerk. Um, I think they like to let things sort of play out, and they also, I think they like Mike. You know, it's frustrating now, but you know, in the moment, this is it's hard to be a Vikings fan right now, and it's it's hard to watch Mike bang his head against a wall that's from the '90s and. Um, and continue to have miscommunication with his quarterback, and it's really frustrating. But I think once you get five years removed from it, the Mike Zimmer era is going to be looked at as a pretty pretty successful era of Vikings football. Like it's not a, it's like it's like the Denny Green era uh, minus one NFC Championship game. Yeah. So I, I don't think they want to just crap on him. So if things get really bad in the next month, all right. But I don't think they're going to get that bad. So they're not going to fire Mike Zimmer during the season. Is my prediction what what do you what's your vibe on what do you guys think that's exactly right um and and so so here's the thing that i'm going to say that fans are going to say that's stupid but i believe it to be true the other thing is in firing mike i'm going to tell you right now the wills are thrilled to be friends with bill parcells and if you do mike dirty parcells is not going to be your friend and in their mind as giants fans lawrence taylor fans parcells fans uh, so I think they are going to try to be as diplomatic with Mike as possible because if they lose Bill, that's to them, that's a big deal. Yeah, and, is, and I think Mike would take it personally either way. Like even after the season, if you get Mike in a room and say, listen, man, like it's just not working between you and Kirk. It's not we're not we're not going forward. And so we just feel like we have to make a change. We thank you so much for eight years of winning football. Um, 
you fixed our defense. It was 2017 was great. The miracle, like you're part of some iconic, like you're part of one of the most iconic moments in Vikings history. There's no way to let him down easy. He's going to be pissed right. either way. But right. you know, you got to. It's the move that you have to make. Write so. this down. Uh, all right, back to Greg. Your second prediction, sir. It's, it's interesting. You said winning football. Uh, let's call it winning-ish football, right? Um, <laughs> Competitive football. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah. yeah. Ish. Uh, <laughs> in that vein, the above Vikings, five, above five hundred ish football. Ish, so yeah. Is. And in that phrase, in that game, the Vikings will not win a game by a margin wider than seven points for the rest of the season. <laughs> wow. They might Dude, eke out some yeah. victories. You got the Lions in there again. Doesn't doesn't. Uh, yeah, we which we beat by what three? Yeah, yeah. Bear, so bear. It's at so Detroit too, on it's the a road, road game. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's we're a just tough gonna, environment. The victories we have will be eked out this season yeah. no, well, nothing nothing will be just completely decisive and and i've thrown this out a few times but i think greg it's 28 games if you go back 28 games the only game in which they've had a 20 point lead or more is home against the lions last year yep so they don't even they're not built Ugh, which yeah. is crazy and i know their defense isn't exactly you know the purple people eaters anymore but like the weapons they have on offense and oh, wow. kirk cousins when he's hot and they can't build 20 point leads once in a while they can't blow a team out they don't coach that way so no nope. even if they can play that way they don't coach right. that way they're gonna they're gonna sit on a three-point lead like it's gonna hatch a victory for 45 minutes you know like it's yep. not it's not gonna happen I mean Mike Zimmer was literally quoted after the Minneapolis miracle season and before they signed Kirk Cousins at the combine saying you know we need to we need to be we need to score 21 points and keep games close it's like okay keep games close Against better teams, yeah, like keep it close and try to win. But like, what about the other teams that you could beat by twenty? You know, it's I don't know. Write this down. It doesn't make sense. All right, Judd, back to you. Okay, actually, continue. Judd, but before we get to your prediction, yeah, uh, it's so obvious how much weight you've lost based yes. on your uh, the the subtraction of two chins here. How did how have you lost so much weight in the last three weeks or so? As simple as this, Phil. Thanks to my friends at. Livia Weight Control Centers, the pandemic pounds are peeling off. I am actually down from 240 to uh, 223, going to weigh in again tomorrow. Hopefully dropped a few more. But the most important thing is I'm, I'm going to be 52 this month. I'm healthier now. And and a month ago, I was too, I was too big, too big. And now I, I am turning a corner, and I want you to join me on this weight loss journey. And here's the best part. First 10 weeks are free. That's right. First 10 weeks are free. Livia.com or 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia, L-I-V-E-A.com. Check them out. And again, first 10 weeks are free. Join me in dropping the pounds, and it's a very simple program, feeling better about yourself. Uh, also, you know, as you get skinnier, you'll probably look even better in those chill boys long mm -hmm. underwear, chill boys underwear. I already feel better in them. That's oh, exactly dude. right. Chill boys, the most comfortable underwear we collectively have ever worn on this show. Uh, they're a Minnesota-based company, and they care about one thing, your comfort and their bamboo fabric, which you could have making you feel amazing during these holiday months. In fact, why don't you go to chillboys.com and pick up a pack for a loved one? In fact, yeah. there's... You know, of the five best things you can do for a loved one, I would say getting them some chill boys, athletic wear, long underwear, whatever your whatever your you know favorite uh, performance brand is Bamboo performance brand. brand yeah, yeah right. chillboys.com and tell them Purple Daily sent you guys. All right, Judd, we're back to you now. Here, go ahead. Football. Continuing on my Vikings Ravens thread, and the, the fact that I fully expect the defiance and bounce back on Sunday in Baltimore, Maryland. Write this down. Kirk Cousins will throw for more than 300 yards against the Ravens. Who, by the way, have by the, the worst pass defense in the National Football League, giving up 296 oh, wow. yards per game. Yeah. So Kirk Cousins will go for 300 or more passing yards, Declan, on Sunday. Yeah. Got it. Right. That would be a pretty monster game on the road. Kirk versus Lamar Jackson. I think, he's gonna, I think four, this man. is going to be the typical, the typical Vikings thing. Take that. Um, by the way, uh, by the way, we'll get to this, but Mike Zimmer is on one today 
at his yes, press yes. conference. I just got a note about this. Yeah, okay. yes, yes. he is on one, and yes. we, will, we will get to it in a couple minutes here. Declan, go ahead with your second prediction. All right, my second prediction, Lamar Jackson won. I will say Lamar Jackson will account for 330 total yards passing and rushing for the Ravens. Wow. So Lamar Jackson will account for 330 total yards passing and rushing against the Vikings on Sunday. Ooh. All right. He's going to go Break off. this down. All right, write this down. I'm going to make it real quick. I'm going to sneak a go for football prediction in here because this is football. It's Vikings, but it's also football. Write that down. Yep. All right, so the the Golden Gophers, I never jumped off the bandwagon. I told you guys after that Bowling Green loss, the officials screwed the Gophers. Listen, just total fluke. They're going to bounce back. That's not true. Um, The Gophers will win against Illinois, but they will not cover the 14 and a half. So the, I don't know. I don't know where the odds makers get off making the Gophers fourteen and a half point favorites here. I mean, Illinois did beat Penn State a couple weeks ago, so the Gophers and they're ranked twentieth. One of the worst 20th? football games ever played. Twentieth. <laughs> uh, That's a PJ little aggressive, football, dude. People really. PJ Fleck just got a seven year contract extension two minutes ago. By the way, what? Yeah, PJ Fleck just got. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's happening oh. today? Yep. He just get got Roycey back on, man. Oh, I want to hear Roycey. Get Roycey yeah. back on. Reset the Roycey <laughs> clock. The shot clock. That? Oh man! All right, so they're gonna they're gonna beat Illinois, but they won't cover the fourteen and a half. All right, Greg, your third yeah. and final prediction, sir. Break Go this ahead. Down. All right, I feel like this one's gonna hit Judd in the same pet peeve area that that I have. While losing to the Packers at home in the fourth quarter, while our offense is on the field. The wave will break out, disrupting our ability to operate the offense. <laughs> I will monitor this for you too. Oh, I'll be there this. too. I'm gonna oh. be. I'm taking my dad for his 70th birthday. We'll go for the pain. Happy again. birthday to him, and I love that prediction. <laughs> I why do it. they do that? Why do they do that while the offense is on the field? Sometimes, dude. The it, way it, it always starts in the corner of the cheap seats, right? It just always sure. starts up there, and the fact that it happens and people still get into it kills me because only when we're on offense it yeah. never happens when but we're on defense it, that's the stupidest thing oh, and it's if, terrible and if 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 kirk was was truly a, a guy who, who was um who could take control brady would go nuts manning would go nuts like they they would be trying to quiet the crowd and sit the bleep down right well, he it's, doesn't even have ridiculous. the authority to call timeouts. So I know he, he really doesn't. Has, he doesn't have the authority to tell everybody to calm down. But so, like, you who know? are the idiots? You're so right. Like, who starts the wave <laughs> when your team's on offense? Yeah, let's make some noise for the offense. <laughs> uh, Greg, since you great predictions, Greg, we appreciate you coming on. We're sorry you had to endure that just absolutely terrible flight back with Cowboys fans. Since you've got this platform here on Purple Daily, this life changing pinnacle moment right now, is there anyone you'd like to thank that brought you to this point? Yeah, I'll give you a quick three. My dad for indoctrinating me into Vikings fandom at a young age. This is basically his fault. I blame him the most. Uh, number two, <laughs> like my wife for being so gung ho oh, about nice. being Viking fans that she let us get season tickets to ruin every weekend going to Minnesota. <laughs> like, oh, we're supposed to re- relax and rest. Let's go punch ourselves in the face. And <laughs> and three, the Austin squad, my friends, for throwing purple parties when we don't go up to games, we drink the pain away. And specifically, my friend Ben, who introduced me to Purple Daily. Without him, I would not be on the show today. So I appreciate awesome, all of them. Awesome, thanks, dude. Ben. Hey, great stuff. Shout out to Ben. Thanks for to that. Ben. Thanks to Greg. We'll get you on again sometime. All right. Appreciate you guys. Great stuff, right. Greg. Thank all you. Right. All right, back over to Judd Zolgad, your third and final prediction. Write this down. Okay, I'm going to go off the board a little bit here and and uh, go outside the Vikings, but to another NFC North opponent. Jared Goff will be benched as the Lions quarterback at some point this season. Now, David Blau is the backup, so it's terrible. But Jared Goff, um, Man Campbell, is going to Man Campbell and decide, i got to make a change at quarterback. And it's going to be, hey, Blau, come over here. So Jared Goff will be benched by the Lions at some point this season. Yeah, I think that should probably be a given. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, Declan. Uh, I'll make a Vikings prediction here on Justin Jefferson. I will say Justin Jefferson will go for at least 100 yards and have a touchdown against the Ravens. JJ has been under 100 the last two. Yep. So he has been under 100, held under 100 yards the last two games for the Vikings. So I'll say he goes over 100 and he has a touchdown against the Ravens. Yeah, let's get that guy some targets, huh? How about more than four targets in a game? 
So, all right, and then my final prediction here. Write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down. So, Judd, you just made some comment about Kirk. If he was, if he was able to control things, right? Like he would tell the crowd to be quiet, don't yeah. do the wave. You go nuts. So, so Kirk is going to show you that he can control things in this game against the Ravens. Write this down. We will see Kirk Cousins on camera calling a timeout inside of three minutes of the first half, second half, or sometime in overtime. He will call a timeout himself. He won't, well, I don't know, Zimmer, Zimmer, I let Zimmer call the timeout. I just work here. No, he will take control of calling a timeout himself inside of three minutes of the first half, second half, or sometime in overtime. That he called it, though. You'll see like, him. Did, you, you, told you, will see him you will see him just calling call a timeout. The, call a timeout. Mm -hmm. Well, you're saying that someone because like be it in could his come ear. from upstairs and say, "Call timeout, call timeout," and then he's going to call the, the timeout, but he's not oh, going to have God. called it. It's going to come from upstairs. I but think he did. Visuals... But, he, but he didn't. He didn't call it. Why didn't he call it? Well, no one was in his ear, I guess. On, yeah, no, I think Sunday. the visual of him doing it is enough. Okay. Even even That's if it's coming from upstairs, I'm not argue because that. yeah, it, like it, it, he could he could not make a signal I was just and saying, then walk over. There's a chance he is told that before um, his his communication shuts off, you know, call the timeout. But I'm fine with that. If he call, if we see him call it, I'm I think that's absolutely fine. Okay. So there it is. That's right. Kirk Cousins, master commander like of the that. two minute drill. He will be he will be given the keys like to the two like... minute drill. <laughs> did the did, did the hand touch the fingers? I don't the hand touch the fingers. Don't have out. Don't have out. All right, um, so we, we still have to get to purple positivity, but before that, all right, so Chad Graff from The Athletic is one of the Vikings beat reporters sending out quotes and tweets of Mike Zimmer's press conference. Here's one of them. Mike Zimmer brought a number of stats to his press conference today, proudly noting the Vikings rank defensively in these categories. Eighth in turnover differential, 12th in points against, first in sacks, fifth in third down defense, 13th in first downs against, 10th in rush yards, 8th in pass yards, 11th in first downs, 7th in yards. So he's trying to he's trying to tell you guys this back off. Of, my defense is pretty darn good. This is part of the end. But this kind of doesn't this backfire like what here's my question. What are your expectations? Again, as a fan, as yep. an organization, yep. as a coach, He's up there thumping his chest saying, hey, we're first in sacks, and we're like top 10-ish in all these other categories. Well, dude, there's, it's not like there's 100 teams. There's 32 teams. Why are you thumping your chest about being like top 10-ish defensively? That's not, okay, that might sneak you into the playoffs, but that yeah. shouldn't, like, that. It, this, is, this is more evidence of the bar being so low compared to where it should be, right? Well, what are you guys getting on me for? We're twelfth in points against. That's pretty good, right? You know what this There's is? There's only thirty-two teams. I want to say, and I don't remember the exact context for this. I I want to say that Brad Childress did the same thing with some stats towards the end. I'm telling you, we should come up with. I I am not being flippant when I say the final days of a coach trying to hang hang on is is like a death. It's predictable. The pr the predictability of what they do. And the means to which they like change and suddenly and suddenly, uh, you know, Zimmer parading out a bunch of stats, stats that probably two weeks back he would have crumpled up and thrown away. Um, and that's why I fully expect the bounce back. The, the bounce, the Vikings bounce back is part of the end. Uh, which, which is why the Packers game falls at the perfect time, because that's where you get smoked and embarrassed and get fired. But, Phil, this is what Mike is doing is part of the end. And it's him desperately trying to say, you don't understand. And here's the best part. So did, did he read any offensive statistics? No. Well, I, 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 well, I the, shouldn't the, say that. The I'm stats only that seeing, you have are what? Um, are defensive I'm, statistics? I'm only seeing defensive. So I don't want to speak out of turn. Right. But what, you, but what Chad Graff is tweeting, he's appealing to the, well, what I do is still going well. You guys don't get that. But what you do is you coach the whole team. He does, but that's not my. But my point you is, you coach the whole team. But he's desperate, so he's trying to tell you he doesn't think that you know what he's supposed to do. So he's telling you, I was hired to coach defense, Dude. and look at damn it, these statistics are impressive. I know you were hired to coach the team, the team, he, and the team is three and four. He does, and the and the team is bad at late in games. 
He doesn't Ugh. care what you think. He cares in his mind what he thinks his responsibility is. And this is another, it's just like he never considered that bring, that broaching the fact that he was finally sitting down with his starting quarterback, multi-million dollar player. It never occurred to him that that was a really bad idea because yeah. the rest of us would say, dude, so you haven't really talked to him on a weekly basis oh since 2018. God. Here's another one. All right. He's I don't hanging on big. for dear life. Well, okay. A <laughs> couple of things here real quick. So, yeah. So he's he's listing all these numbers and he's saying, you know, hey, we're twelfth in points against. That's pretty good, right? Hey, we're we're tenth in rush yards allowed, eighth in pass yards allowed. Like all of these are pointing to like we're we're like a top ten ish defense. Yep. Which isn't that's not that's not fine. True. It's good. I mean, it's better than being yeah. it's better than last year, not certainly. Really true either, though. But he's got like a top ten ish defense and and offensively, he's pulling the reins back to be conservative. Right. Guy. Unless you're the best defense in the NFL, you should be looking to be aggressive offensively. Like it's yeah. not good enough to be like, oh, we're kind of like close to top ten offense and defense. Right. Guess what that'll get you? A nine and eight record at best, probably, mm -hmm. based on their schedule, and a first round exit. Also, here's another thing, because communication has been he is a bad communicator. Let's yeah. just say that. You know, he's failed to build a relationship with Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. You know, Kirk, I think, is also weird in certain ways as a leader. So Mike Zimmer was asked, this is from Andrew Kramer, Star Tribune, if he had talked to Daniil Hunter yet. So this is when this is Wednesday. Daniil Hunter suffered a season-ending torn pectoral injury 72 hours ago, or like 60 hours ago. Mm -hmm. I have not talked to him, but from what I gather, he understands it's football. You, what, you, it's three, three days after your, your star defensive player, a Hall of Fame defensive player, suffers a devastating the second year in a row in which his season will come to an end with right. a devastating injury right and you haven't talked to him yet because what because in mike's world daniel for 2021 can no longer help mike that's how but, old but, that, like, that's build how a relationship with the guy that's how foot but that's how the old school football guard worked lots of times you can't help me so why would i talk to you they the whole it's completely cliche but the whole next man up thing it's how those guys thought and mike is in that that group the good news the good news though is this is part of the process it is unfolding before our eyes the end is unfolding he did list offensive stats by the way we're 10th in rush yards per game eighth in pass yards per game first in interception percentage fourth in sacks per play <laughs> 11th in first downs per game seventh in yards per game so, so we've does. just got to do better in the red zone Chris Thomason claps back uh, in a tweet from the uh, Pioneer Press and says, there's one stat Vikings coach Mike Zimmer failed to read during Wednesday's press conference. The Vikings are three and four. <laughs> oh, God. It's getting testy between Zimmer and the media here, too, I feel well, like. Well, yeah, but but it oh, but it has to be because the thing about this is, th but this is the process. Like, you don't, you don't get to the end unless this happens, yeah. and you need to get to the end. On that note, I love I love it though. So he had some poor schlep pull all of these stats for hey, pull a bunch of positive stats. But Mike, we're below five hundred. Ah, I don't care. Yeah. Pull a bunch of positive stats. And and the funniest thing is, who's he convincing? Yeah. Like also, this are the Wilfs going to say, "Oh my God, look at all these statistics Mike pulled. He's a good coach." This is also the trap that Kirk Cousins defenders fall into too, which is look at all these stats. Right. Oh my God! Right. Look at—he's one of six quarterbacks to ever do this. No. He's one of three quarterbacks to do so, this. This is—it's like, okay, then the, then why has he played a hundred ten games in the NFL and his teams are five hundred? Yeah. If he's Tom Brady, Dan Marie, like, why is why are his teams not winning eleven and twelve games more often? Because in there, I know Kirk, the answer, but it, yeah, and in Kirk's world and Mike's world, wins are all that matter until they don't. Until they don't, until they don't win, and then it's stats that they're all. And then it's got to be right? something else. But yeah. but I mean, you know, to call a spade a spade, Zimmer has real problem accepting responsibility. Yes, he does, and Kirk does too. And that's where that. And and I've been told this by people in the know, and it's true. For as different as those two men are, they are the same person, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. They are very. They, they're insecure. They're defensive, and they're not really good when things start to go bad, which is if you're a quarterback or football coach, crisis management is probably really important. No. You know, I, I'm going to make an executive decision here. Every yeah. Wednesday we do purple positivity. 
Take it off the table. I love what you're going to do. Not take today. it off the table. Not today. Yeah, not today. Not today. Not, not today. Okay. No. To quote Herb Brooks. Not, not today. Purple not positivity today. is done. It's time right. is done. A bruise on I the thigh is a long way from the heart. You want me to play high? You, you, you want me to be a football player? player? You want me to be a football player? I'll be a that'll, football that'll, player. That'll, that'll fire him up, Andre. That's, that'll yep. fire him up. That'll that's get him going. Actually, here's that'll the purple positivity, all right? It's all about Surly. We're, oh, we're, we are positive oh, that Surly oh. is the beverage of choice on I'm Vikings man. football. Someday. Does Surly come to play every week? No. Every day it comes to play. It's always here, Surly. And, of, of course... The Zolgadian favorite, the Furious IPA, which is, as we've declared here on our show, the best IPA in the entire bleeping world. You got to check it out. In fact, you know what? Ten games left, right, guys? I ten games so. left? Yeah, seven plus, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, ten, ten games left. Ten games left. It could be rough. You're going to need a friend because the Vikings aren't your friend. Surly Furious is. So that's right. Make sure that when you sit down to watch the end, because you want to know if they're going to get a really good draft pick or, or not, that you have a Surly Furious, your friend, right by you. The best IPA. Surly Furious. You like Show that? us your cans. You like that? Uh, Kirk Cousins has walked up to the podium. He did say to start his press conference, there were some instances against the Cowboys. He wished he would have pushed the ball down the field more. And that is a microcosm for the Viking season so far. So, uh, all right. Well, that's a wrap on today's episode of Purple Daily presented by Surly. Daily Vikings entertainment or therapy. Vikings mostly decide for us. And uh, it's been a lot of therapy lately. So thanks for hanging out with us. See you guys tomorrow.